Ever wonder what a 150 watt laser can really do? We're going beyond the basics today, cutting a ton of material from acrylic to plywood and putting the EFFI 16S to work on a real craft fair display. Let's fire this thing up. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Brett and this is my laser garage. My wife and I run a full-time laser engraving business out of our home, and this channel is all about helping you out with your laser or CNC business. In the last five years or so that we've been in the laser world, we've used everything from diode lasers to industrial CO2 machines. Today, we're diving into the cutting capabilities of the new Monport EFFI 16S 150 watt laser. This thing is a beast, and today we're focusing entirely on what it can actually cut and how that power translates into real-world productivity. We'll run through the specs real quick, test cuts on a variety of materials, and then I'll show you how I used it to create a professional-looking display stand out of half-inch plywood, perfect for craft fairs, pop-ups, or other events. So let's get started. The EFFI 16S is a new 150-watt CO2 laser from Monport that comes with a massive 63-inch by 40-inch working area, giving you some serious room to work with. That makes it ideal for larger panels, signs, or multi-part jobs. It's equipped with everything you'd expect in a laser of this class. A Ruida DSP controller, built-in CW5200 water chiller, autofocus probe, red light indicator, and an upgraded and beefed up motion system capable of engraving up to 1400 millimeters a second. That's a pretty bold claim on a DC glass tube laser, but even if it engraved half of that speed, I'd be pretty impressed. We'll definitely be testing that out in a future video. But for now, enough talk. Let's check out the capabilities of this laser's main purpose in my shop, cutting. All right, so let's get into the real heart of this video, cut testing. We're going to look at speed, consistency, edge quality, and overall how clean the cuts are. But I'm keeping this real. I'm not here to show you some sped up footage of me cutting through three quarter inch pine at one millimeter a second. I don't think that's very helpful. Instead, I'm running Lightburn material test cards and a bunch of different materials I actually use day in and day out in my shop. But don't worry, we will have a little fun with some thicker materials later on. Also, everything you'll see in this section will be shown at real speed, not sped up or overly edited. That way you'll get the most accurate picture of what this laser is really capable of in a working environment. I'll be using the stock two and a half inch focusing lens with shop air set to about 20 PSI. I've also removed the honeycomb bed to cut directly on the included knife blade table. Now, yes, you do lose a few clamping options compared to the honeycomb table, but honestly, the reduced flashback or cleaner underside of your material and the easier visual confirmation that your cuts made it all the way through, those are worth the trade off for me. For these reasons, I've really been into cutting on the knife blade table lately. Also, this portion of the video will be fully chaptered, so you can skip to whatever material you're most interested in testing or comparing. We'll start with the thinnest materials and work our way up to the thickest. First, we'll start with two millimeter basswood plywood. Of course, this is gonna cut like paper in a laser like this, but I wanted to test it to check quality mainly. Although this is a thin and lightweight material, it's still very useful and commonly used for craft items like ornaments or bookmarks. We use it a lot here in our shop to make gift card holders. The 150 watt laser cut this like nothing and cut every square, maxing out the 55 millimeter per second test I created. I didn't see any need to push this any further by creating a larger test sample. It cut like butter and all speed and power combinations resulted in perfect cuts with no burning. Next, let's take a look at another thin but commonly used material around here. Three millimeter MDF core plywood. This material has similar uses to the 2mm basswood, and we commonly use it for the same style projects. But it's especially useful when you want projects to have a natural wood grain finish because it comes with white oak, maple, cherry, and walnut veneers. Again, this pretty much maxed out all my small scale test material cards and resulted in perfect cuts front and back. Cuts in the 35 to 40 millimeter per second range will be no problem at all. Switching gears, let's test out some three millimeter clear cast acrylic. Another common and versatile material in our shop here. We use this all the time for display cases and awards, even piggy banks. Sticking with the common theme of maxing out our test, we've also maxed out another one here. Cuts at around 30 millimeters per second will be a breeze. 
even in the 40 to 45% power range. Moving on to solid wood, let's now try some five millimeter walnut. I don't use a ton of this material here, but have used it in the past for ornaments. Perfect cuts through all ranges of my testing here. Next, our most used material in our shop, six millimeter MDF core plywood. This is the same basic material as the three millimeter version, only thicker. We use this all the time for signs, awards, and card boxes. It's very versatile, but just kind of difficult to cut. Being able to cut this in the 20 millimeter per second range is going to really speed up production over here. As you can see, the cuts are all very clean front and back. Pretty darn happy with these results. Next, another highly used material in our shop, six millimeter Baltic birch plywood. We use this material for all of our custom wine box lids. It's a very hardy material and looks great, but Baltic birch is very difficult to cut through because it has many thick layers. Lots of glue to get through. This test probably surprised me the most, again, cutting easily in the 20 millimeter per second range. Back to acrylic now, this time at six millimeters thick. This is not a common material in our shop, but if you're into making jigs or templates, it's a go-to material. I maxed out my first test card, but decided to push the limits on this one and found solid cutting up to 17 millimeters per second. Next, I had some cedar fence picket material laying around that I previously milled to about seven millimeters and decided to give that a try. This is a soft wood, but the open grain pattern can cause some issues getting clean cuts. It also burns very easily, so I was pleased to see clean cuts up to about 21 millimeters per second. And while I was on cedar, I also had some half inch stock, which the Monport cut through at 12 millimeters per second at 60% power. This could definitely be pushed a little bit further if need be. Next up, 3 8 inch pine. I was kind of surprised that this cut out faster than the seven millimeter cedar, to be honest. I cut every square on my first test, so I upped the speed a little to see how fast I could push it. I got some clean cuts up to 22 millimeters a second, but you can see there's a little more surface burning on these examples. That's because since I'm getting into some thicker stock, I'm lowering my focus a little bit to get through all the way with the stock two and a half inch lens. A four inch lens would definitely be beneficial for this and other thicker materials, so you can ensure you're in focus throughout the entire cut. All right, this is now the material I've been most excited to test with this new beast. Three eighths inch Baltic birch plywood. This is something I haven't really been able to cut effectively with any of my previous lasers. And just like the quarter inch version I showed earlier, we use a ton of this stuff, especially for the sides and bottoms of our wine boxes. Up to this point, I've either built those using traditional woodworking tools or more recently my CNC, but cutting them cleanly on a laser like this, that could be a total game changer for us. I saw solid results up to about 14 millimeters a second, but if I were running a full batch for production, I'd probably dial that back to about 11 or 12 millimeters per second, just to make sure I get full clean cuts through every time. That extra margin gives me peace of mind, especially when cutting tight fitting parts. I was honestly so impressed with how well it cut that I went ahead and prototyped a few brand new versions of our wine boxes. And so far, I'm loving it. The biggest upgrade, I can now add finger joints easily without needing to drill a relief hole like I used to have to do on my CNC. That saves a bunch of time and makes a much cleaner result. I even cut the grooves for the sliding lid and interior dividers right on the laser. If you're curious about how I build these boxes from start to finish with the laser, let me know down in the comments. I'd be happy to do a full breakdown video if there's any interest. Half inch plywood is another material that I haven't laser cut in the past, so I was excited to give it a try. This is half inch sanded ply from Home Depot and it cut okay. I mean, the speeds were pretty good up to about 10 millimeters per second, but it charred a little bit more than I would like to see. For our project in this video, I got some half inch birch plywood to test cut. It's a little higher quality, so I'm curious to see how it'll work out. We'll see soon. Now for a little bit of fun. I had some seven inch walnut and some three quarter inch plywood that I thought I would give a shot. I didn't do test grids on these, but I cut out the walnut at five millimeters a second at 65% power and got through the three quarter inch plywood cleanly at four millimeters a second at 70% power. Pretty impressive, especially with the two and a half inch lens. This is just for fun and not something I would cut on a regular basis, but it was good to see the Monport was able to get through at a respectable speed. 
So yeah, I think it's safe to say the EFFI 16S is a seriously powerful machine. I hope all those sample cuts gave you a real sense of what a 150 watt laser like this can actually do in a working shop. And here's the cool part. If the EFFI 16S is a little too big for your space, Montport actually has several other models in what they call their high speed CO2 lineup. There's the 9S, the 10S, and the 13S, which give you the same build quality and fast performance in smaller footprints, offering 90 watt, 100 watt, and 130 watt tubes respectively. So no matter your space or budget, there's probably a version out there that fits your setup and still gives you some serious cutting power. All of these machines are currently on sale over at Montport's website, and if you want to save even more and help support the channel, you can use my promo code, BRETT10 at checkout. That'll knock off an additional 8%, and I do earn a small commission, which goes right back into making more videos like this one. I'll drop a link to everything, including my code, down in the description if you want to check it out. All right, enough with the samples. Let's build something useful. If you caught one of my most recent videos, you'll know I announced that I'll be attending a local craft show this summer. Actually, it's happening next week, if you can believe it. I'll leave a link to that video right here, because even if you're not into doing craft shows yourself, it might be worth a watch. I talk about my goals for the event and they may be a little bit different than what you'd expect. So since I don't typically do craft shows, I needed to either buy or build some display stands for my products. And after seeing how well the EFFI 16S performed during all that cut testing, I figured this would be the perfect chance to put it to use in a real world project. For this build, I'm using half inch birch plywood and three quarter inch dowels. I designed everything with interlocking slots and supports, so there's no screws or glue required. The goal was something portable, sturdy, and clean looking. And I wanted it to be flexible enough that I can change the layout on the fly. The three quarter inch holes let you configure the dowels in a bunch of different ways, perfect for holding signs, hanging products, or creating simple risers. And the project really tested the EFFI 16S across the entire bed. Every piece was cut in one pass, including the circles, notches, and rounded corners. I even used the front pass-through to load a full 4x4 sheet of material, which is pretty wild to be honest. I get it, this thing's a beast and not everyone has the space for a machine like this, but having that much cutting area opens up a lot of doors. It'll be really interesting to see how much this machine fits into our production workflow in the months ahead. All in all, the cuts took about 20 minutes total, and the best part, everything fit together straight off the bed. No sanding, no fuss. A job like this would have taken multiple passes or even more prep on a lower powered machine. But the EFFI 16S, it knocked it out fast and clean. I think these stands are going to work great at my show and I'll definitely follow up with how everything goes. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that recap. So what's the real takeaway here? The EFFI 16S isn't all about cutting thicker materials. The real magic is how it lets you cut both thick and thin materials faster, cleaner, and more efficiently. For example, cutting quarter inch Baltic birch plywood on a smaller 60 watt machine might take multiple passes or force you to slow down so much that it drags out your workflow. But with the EFFI 16S, you're making single clean passes at a high speed. That translates directly into more production, which is a huge win for any laser business. Whether you're batching out signs, ornaments, or displays like the one I made in this video, you're getting a more professional cut without the bottlenecks. And of course, with that speed and precision, you're not just saving time, you're freeing yourself up to focus on the creative and strategic side of your business. More time for designing new products, improving your marketing, or even just spending more time with your family. That's the real ROI. Now, I know not everyone has the space or budget for machine this size. When I first started out, I sure didn't. In fact, my very first CO2 laser was a Monport 80 watt machine. Even now, after trying and loving other brands like Thunder Laser, I'll say this, Monport makes budget-friendly machines that can absolutely help you start and grow your laser business. If you're in a small space or just starting out, check out something like their 80-watt model or even a 60-watt machine. They don't take up nearly as much room, and while they're not going to cut half-inch plywood in one pass, they're more than capable of handling the bulk of what you need when you're getting started, especially if you're doing thinner materials, engraving, or smaller scale projects. If you want to hear more about my thoughts about other Monport CO2 lasers, I'll leave a link to a playlist I've put together in the description. I'll even link to a video I made discussing budget lasers and industrial lasers. The bottom line is this. 
You don't need to jump straight into a 150 watt laser to build a successful business. What you do need is a machine that fits your space, your budget, and your goals, and the willingness to learn and level up as you go. That's what I did. I started with a budget machine, reinvested back into my business, and upgraded as my work and customer base grew. Now I'm running multiple machines, including the EFFI 16S, and get to share the journey with you. So whether you're working out of a spare room, a garage like me, or you're scaling up to something bigger, there's a path forward. And if you're considering Monport, I can tell you from experience, they've come a long way, and they're building machines that make it easier than ever to get started without breaking the bank. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe because I've got way more real world laser content coming your way. And if you've got questions about the EFFI 16S or want to see a specific project tested, drop a comment below. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.